Hey guys, uh, welcome. Um, hopefully uh, everybody had a great weekend. Um, we're going to go ahead and like normal, just wait a few minutes here, but my name is Ryan Dunford. Um, I'm uh, with Horizon Hobby and TLR um, and make some of the eight scale products and some of the other products that you see out there. Um, but we'll go ahead and get started. Good morning, Brad. Um, if I can recollect, I think it's pretty early for you. <laughs> um, it's, it's been a long time. I don't, I, yeah, Brad, you, you see my shirt? Yay. Um, it's kind of fitting that you're the first one to say hi. Um, but we'll wait a couple minutes here until uh, people can hop on. Um, I know all sorts of people are dealing with all sorts of stuff today with all the fires uh, going on on the West Coast and everything else going on in the, the East Coast, the U.S., and then everything going on everywhere. So good news is these are recorded, so they will be posted later on. And um, you can watch them back anytime you want. Hey, everybody else. Hopefully everybody's going going well. Let's see here. We're starting to get some people on here. So we'll go ahead and get started in a minute. Um, by now, most people have probably figured I'd, if I say I'm going to start at a certain time, I try to. So um, we are here today. We are doing the 8XT Bag D, um, which is the front clip. And uh, that's all we're going to do today. But by the time we get it all finished and done, it's probably going to be about 45 minutes, guys. Um, I could build it really fast, but then usually you don't get all the fun tips and stuff. So we're going to go ahead and get started and uh, get this opened up and go from there. And again, we've already built bag A, B, and C. Um, if you're trying to catch up, you can go back and watch those videos either on the Team Wilson Racing Facebook page or on um, our YouTube channel. Sorry, this is actually my phone that's in front of my face, and that is what is the camera for down on the, the bottom here. So as you can see, it's basically split up D1, D2, D3, D4. And then these are various bags and you'll see they're separated. This is just a bag of arms with the inserts so they can make sure those are correct. And then these are the rest of the plastics uh, for this step. And then these are some of the metal parts um, for this step. So we're going to open up the plastics bag and dump this stuff out because this is going to be kind of used in all the different steps. Um, I'll show you some things about that. And then I can open the arms up too, although I don't really need those until later. But we'll get them open so that we have them. And then we'll open these metal parts here too. Anything that's not a bag that's numbered, you can pretty much open right away. Uh, the reason it's just in separate bags is so that you don't see this metal part hitting this plastic part. Then by the time it arrives, you know, it's worn it off or worn anything off, any coating. Uh, but these can all just kind of be set to the side for now. Um, this step starts with uh, kind of building the, the gearbox. And so all of these bags can be set to the side. And we're going to start with bag D1. Well, that's because that's the first bag, guys. Um, hopefully everybody's going okay. Steven, it is my understanding that Dakota is going to Southern Nets. Um, at least that's what him and I have been talking about. So just kind of where to start and what to do there on the different cars. Uh, but again, guys, I always open up the sub bags and you'll see me, I'll set these to the side, not reach all the way down here to the trash. And the reason for that is sometimes there's little washers or whatnot in them and they can get stuck to the bag. And so if I'm not paying great attention when I'm opening them, if I just set them to the side here, it doesn't end up falling into the trash can or anything weird like that. And then you'll see there's a, a sub bag one and a sub bag two. Uh, again, these are just sub bagged so that like all the steel parts stay together and they don't beat up the aluminum parts, things like that. So for this step, D1, I can open the D1 bag and the D1 sub bags and go ahead and get started here. Um, oops, hold on, I forgot. Forgot to grab some motor spray, guys. Um, for a couple of these steps, this is super important. Uh, anytime you have metal to metal, you always want to make sure you clean it off before you do any type of um, thread lock. And I'm also taking, and I'm 
shaking my thread lock. Um, that way it's just mixed right, guys. It's, it's a type of adhesive product that does need to be mixed up. So I'll just open that up and leave it sitting here. Take the cap off of this, leave this. And the very first thing we're going to do is go ahead and get our pinion bearing, our pinion and our bearings into the case here. So I always just slide the bearing onto the pinion. Now the Truggy does use a different ring and pinion gear. So you see we've marked them a little bit different. Let me see if I can show this here. So you can see the, the um, ring gear says 4310 on it, but it's the normal color. And then the pinion gear is black in color. And it you, you'll be able to tell, I mean, the teeth are a lot more jagged and whatnot. So um, the Truggy uses a different ring and pinion, guys, just so you know. So I'm going to slide my 5x13 bearing on here onto the shaft to start off with. Um, just so you guys know, we do make HD bearings that go in this spot, which are just super high quality bearings. They're TLR347000. And they come with four bearings, so you can do the front and rear of the car all at once. Um, so I'll just, usually I'll just slide that right in there and push it. See, the bearing stays in there well. And then you got your bearing crush tube and then the smaller bearing. And all that's in place. Now, here's your outdrive coupler and your set screw. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spray out the hole here. I probably should have put a straw on, but... I don't want you guys to have to wait for that and see me fumble around with stuff. And you'll see, kind of changes a little bit of color. It almost becomes like a grayish instead of black. And it's, you're just getting all the, they put a, a slight amount of oil on everything that they ship over. And then I'm going to spray my rag here, make a spot so that I can now clean off my set screw. And you can see a little bit of black came off of it. Uh, nothing too crazy, but you always want to find a clean spot on your rag to do that. Now for this, here's how I do this part, guys. Okay, so this is the flat right here. It's a little harder, there you go. It's a little harder to see because it's black. But there's the flat, it's facing straight up. And there's the hole for the set screw. Now I'm gonna put, not spray a bunch, but you'll see whoop, in there, I kind of fill it up. And then I'm gonna spin this around once and kind of reline it up. Um, and what that does is it gets thread lock around the whole shaft, but you don't want to tilt it back at this point because you don't want the thread lock to get back into the bearing. But it gets thread lock around the whole shaft and makes it so the shaft won't rock at all. And then I put some thread lock on the, the set screw. You can see there's thread lock on there now. And now I'm pushing from the back on the pinion gear and from the front. And we're going to go ahead and put this in place. You kind of let it find its flat spot. Let's go to the corner here, wipe off the excess thread lock. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up. Okay. Now, if you did it right, you don't have to tighten it so much. This is going to break because tightening that, all that does at that point is just give this more of a chance of cracking because this is heat treated really hard. Um, the thread lock should do its job and keep it in place, assuming you give it ample time to dry. But you can see, spins great, you know, no problems there. And that's putting your pinion in place. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the tower out of here. We put that one in those bags because it doesn't fit well elsewhere. So, but I need the tower. So, again, I do use this Hitachi driver. Um, the company got bought, so they use their parent name now, and I can't really remember what it is right now. But I'm just going to use this on setting five for most of this stuff. I'm going to line up the front tower, get the M3 by 10 screws. 
And something we talked about in the past is the way you measure a screw. So here's a screw, and this is a flathead screw. Probably better up here, maybe. Okay, so a flathead screw, when you measure it, you measure it from the end to the flat. Okay, so from here to here, this screw is supposed to be 10 millimeters long or close, 9.3 to like 10.1 or something like that. But it's on a flathead screw, you always measure from the flat of the flathead to the, to the screw head there, right? And we're gonna line this up. Run these both in there. And then I'm gonna check them with my hand. Whenever I'm building a car new, the threads are all new and everything. I always make sure I finish with a hand wrench. Um, it's just kind of how I was taught. And that way I don't turn this up to nine or something and possibly risk stripping the plastic threads the first time I'm driving it in. Because the very first time you drive it in, it creates the, the most heat that you can. Um, so well, let me see if there's any questions yet, guys, because just listening to me talk probably gets pretty boring. So um good to see everybody coming through here yeah oregon is burning i i'm really scared. i have some family in oregon so it's been been pretty crazy uh brad this was our world shirt when worlds was in perth so it was kind of a special edition just for the team guys that drove there um hunter um Every kit's probably a tiny bit different. It's really up to the product developer how we want to organize the bags when we're building them. Um, that's why, like you saw, the eight scales switch over initially, and we build the turnbuckle shocks and diffs right out of the bat. Um, and that really came down from the way I like to build them. But mainly, if you look at all, like all the photos out there, anytime somebody would be building a car, they'd be done for the night and the car never had any shocks on it well it's because we always saved the shocks for the last thing and you never wanted to build those after everything else was done so um but yeah we're, we're trying uh, to organize things a bit better over time and learn you know we're, we're learning too and people give us you know comments mostly negative but positive too so uh, my hobby talking about i probably should answer this my hobby shop said the new xe elite won't be in stock until january so bummed uh, no, that is not true. Um, the date should be updated on the website now, uh, but they're supposed to ship tomorrow. Um, they're in stock. They're sitting in the warehouse, so there's no reason for us to wait till January to ship them. Um, it was a problem. A date got pulled in from somewhere. <laughs> uh, it was like the latest POs that we'd placed, and um, sometimes computers do weird stuff. We were told, somebody told me, I had them updated, so it should be updated in the system, but they should start shipping tomorrow. Whoops. Uh, I was building Bag D at around 11.30 last Friday for racing on Saturday. This was definitely, I think, one of the longest builds I've done. Had me and my dad. Oh, yeah, Aaron. That's always fun when two people are building at once. Um, uh, Lorenzo, thank you. Uh, I would assume you've driven it. So, um, And then, Vinny, I'm just using some Dynamite, uh, the Magnum Force 2. That's just what I happen to have here right now. There's a lot of good... Uh, motor sprays on the market but let's go ahead and keep building guys so that's uh step d2 now step d3 has you putting the lower on like 2.5 out um for this step, I am going to turn this one up to six just because my driver is a little tired when it comes to that. Now this, okay, so technically, I guess in theory I could put it on that way and it actually even looks kind of right. But just so everybody understands, this goes on this way. You can see the bosses line up and it gives the bearing bosses and everything a place to be. Um, this is something I'll always get both screws started so i'll start the first screw maybe whoop oh, it's gonna be one of those builds huh okay that's fine 
Um, yeah, yeah, and you just gotta push on it properly. Um, okay, so I'll always get them both started, and then as I'm driving this in, right? Let me see if I can do it here. There we go. I'm pushing down on this, right? And the goal is to get everything as lined up as possible. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So now I'm pushing this way. Obviously, I'm right-handed. But I'm not going crazy. I'm not even going to hit it with my driver. Um, it's just over time, I've built enough of these. So one thing I will say, and we do this just because people can't always remember everything, is the manual tells you to put the black grease on now. Um, you can put it on now. Um, and by black grease, it's just the, the TLR black grease, which is really good gear to gear grease. Um, I don't ever put it on right now. Uh, I put everything on after the fact, um, because I, I, otherwise I always stick my finger down here into the window and get black grease all over my hand. So I just put it on the gear before I put everything onto the chassis. So you won't see me put the black grease on there, but you should, you Definitely when you're running, you want the black grease on this gear and the pinion gear. So I'm going to put this in, kind of rock that back and forth, and I'm going to push this down in this direction and try to get my cat hair out of it. Um, and then put the front piece on, which snaps in place, so you kind of... There it goes, pop, and that's good to go. And once we tighten that all up, it'll be better, guys. So, um, just so you guys know, we do sell a carbon tower um, in case you're interested. Um, I'll try to do a better job of mentioning the parts that we do sell, but there's a carbon front uh, shock tower is TLR 344049 for this, uh, just so you guys know what the part number is. Uh, and yeah, so there's that. And then you take this tip off, two mil. Now there's three different size screws for this part, okay? I didn't bring my calipers, I should, so that I could show you guys how they all measure. So on button head screws, button head and cap head screws measure the same way. So if you take a tip, a traditional button head screw, okay, a button head screw measures from the end to the base of the head, right? So instead of measuring out here, like you do on a flat head, you measure to the base of the head to there. Okay. And there's three different, you can see there's three different length button heads in this. Um, my Hitachi is going to go on five for this. Now, and it goes just like this. So the longest screw goes up top, the medium screw goes here, and the shortest screw goes here. I always put the middle screws in first. Um, it just kind of helps me make sure that everything's lined up. And I'm not going crazy with any of the screws. They're going to go in at five for this, and that's what they're going to stay at. I'm, I'm not even going to hit them with the driver afterward. Because I'm done this put together front end on this car many many times so now the clutch on my poor Hitachi is start, starting to get a little old um, so you can hear it kind of slip a couple times first um, at this point I'm going to take so on the the gearbox right actually here let's do it in this camera this big side is the side with the gear. So on this opposite side, so I can try to push this this way, make sure this bearing over here is seated. I'm actually going to back these out a tinge. And then what I'm going to do, I'm not like banging this thing away. I'm just going to tap this on the out drive a little bit, guys. Right. And all that's doing is trying to make sure this bearing on this side is as seated as possible. That's all that's for. OK. 
Okay. And then these go down here. And again, nothing crazy. Right? And then that. Spinning pretty good. By the time we get all the other parts bolted up, it'll spin spin nice. Um, we always try to mesh the truggy gears a little bit tighter just to make sure that, you know, everything's going to be okay. Um, you can monkey around with kind of playing with some of the screws and whatnot, but it usually doesn't do much, right? So then that's fine. Again, I don't even have any grease on here yet. Not freaking out about anything in any way. So yeah, see, there we go. No problem. Um, Hopefully everybody's still seeing this okay. Um, I just got a notification that it's having trouble broadcasting to Facebook right now. So we'll go ahead and keep going and then we'll see how it goes once it saves to Facebook for you guys. So sorry about that um, if, if it is being a problem. But that's all of that. Now I can throw all these bags away. And so the next step is putting on what is the B brace. Uh, what is this? Hopefully this clears up. Okay, so for this, I'm going to turn this up to nine now, the torque setting. And this is the B brace, right? So the way the car works is you've got front to back. Here's the front side. It's A, B, and then C, D. Um, and this is the B block. So we're going to go ahead and put this on really quick. And again, I'm going to start one. And then I'm going to drive the other side in. Okay, and then I'm going to finish these off tightening with my driver. Uh, maybe that's why so many people disappeared. We're having trouble streaming to Facebook. Let's edit. Well, I'm just going to keep going, and I'm um, sorry if you can't watch live. Uh, hopefully, you guys catch up either on one of the services. But now you can see, see how nice and smooth this is now just by bolting this on. By the time you bolt this one on, it helps square off the case, and then it's, it's always nice and smooth, guys. So there's that. Um, so the next thing is going to be to start an open bag D2. I guess I won't have as many questions to answer though. That's kind of a bummer. That's the fun part. Um, and I'm again, I'm going to go right ahead and open up the sub bag because it's just a sub bag in this step for purposes of keeping the different types of parts separated. So, but this is a pretty important step. And again, I'm going to separate everything out here. There's a lot of thread lock used in a lot of different places on this step. So hopefully you guys, um, I don't, I don't know how to restart. Can I, I don't think I can restart it. So, okay. Um, hopefully you guys. Uh, let's see. I am going. Uh, so hopefully you guys can see that. Uh, sorry about that, guys. I don't know why Facebook's not working right now, but um, 
let me go ahead and continue the build here. So the very first thing we're doing is I'm going to kind of go askew on the directions here. So the very first thing I always do is the instant I have the, the spindles and carriers, I, I'm going to put those together. So let me grab this. The carriers have this block in here. You just push it out. And this black block is trash. This is the only purpose for this is for shipping to keep everything nice and apart. So you just push those out and you throw these blocks away. Um, now I'm very particular about like how all of this goes together. This is the right side and this is the left side. So here's how I put this together. Thread lock goes into these holes. I blow it in, put it in this side, blow it in. I'm not putting a ton in. I'm just trying to cover the threads. And I'm wiping off the top here. And I'm wiping off the bottom there. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing to the other one. And you'll see I set it on this, not on the hole, but on the side here. And again, I kind of just make it so that it fills the hole, right? And then I blow it down into the threads. Wipe that off, wipe that off, and there's the left one. So this is the right. And these you've got thick and thin. So you can see the top here, this one's thicker than this one. Okay. The thick goes on the top. The thin goes on the bottom. This comes in from the side with the flat surface up. And then these it's not wet anymore. We're going to clean all these off. The kingpins. And now, again, let me get that. And then we're going to start the one side and start the other side. And then I'm going to take, and I just choose a direction that that's, I can push on. And I push that direction, snug that one, not super tight, snug that one. And now, ooh, I tighten. Okay, my ring and it didn't love each other. All right, so now you can see in the back here, can you see maybe this way? See how there's a bunch of thread lock in there? That's why I do it like this. So now I can get in here easily. I don't have to worry about that thread lock getting down into the bearing. I can go in, I can wipe all my excess thread lock out. You can see it's nice and free guys. And now I can just start assembling. I will finish this other side. Right, thick at the top, thin at the bottom, flat up, insert that in place, and then start one screw, start the other screw, and again, hold it in place, taut, hot and then tighten okay this will never ever come apart that way and then clean out all the thread lock from the inside so we're not getting it in the bearings and there you go okay you don't ever want to put the thread lock through here because then it can get in between and then gum everything up and you can see this side too nice and loose guys okay so now we'll go ahead and get the, the drive shafts in place. So I drop a bearing in the back side here, line it up and push it in. Drive shaft comes right through the back side here. 
another bearing. And again, these are eight by 16 bearings, a bigger bearing, pretty common bearing out there. And then hex, center that. Now this, so on the front one, the pin is captured by the wheel, but that's not always going to be going to be in the rear. It's not. So I would just get used to putting thread lock on these. Um, you want to hold the pin so it's centered. And then some have a wheel wrench that's got a hole in it. Mine's older and doesn't. <laughs> And I know people are going to cringe at this, but I usually just grab it and I turn. It's a wheel hex. I mean, as long as I don't slip, you can see I didn't mar anything. Um, nice and smooth spinning, you know, no problems there. So uh, for YouTube, you just go to the Team Losi Racing YouTube page and it's live. So it's the only live thing that'll be there. Um, all right, so we're going to go. This goes in, maybe. Okay, there we go. Hex, pin. Oops, hold that centered. On the buggy, I don't ever use any thread lock because neither they're both captured. Uh, the truggy, the rear one's captured, so I just try to get in the habit of using the thread lock on there. Um, Right. And again, you don't have to like manhandle this thing. It's, it's just holding the pin in place guys. So, uh, in the rear, yeah, you, you could drum a flat spot or you could get on it a little bit harder even, but even then you don't really need to. Um, so now I got my 1.5 for these little arms. Um, there's kind of a couple options. I, I've seen a few different ways of doing this. I use blue thread lock and it's been pretty good as long as I do it when it's all nice and clean. Um, I am going to clean these screws off so that they are clean. But it's really important that you put these in and they just stay tight. We don't have another arm coming out or anything anytime soon. So whatever you need to do to keep them in there. Some people use red thread lock. And that's fine. Um, I just use blue thread lock and I haven't had a problem. Um, what some people do is they'll use blue thread lock and then what they'll do is they'll get a longer uh, two millimeter screw, uh, usually a button head. They're a lot easier to find. So they'll use the flat head up front and then they'll use the button head in the rear wood hole and they'll actually put a nut on the bottom of it because you can fit a nut on this one um, and then they never have any issues. I, I haven't had issues with this in a long time, but so here's what I kind of do. I get thread lock in the hole, plenty of thread lock. I kind of dab thread lock all over. I'm almost using it as glue, you might say. And then I get even a little thread lock on the screw. Right, I'm going to get that one started. And then I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to grab my towel again because thread lock, otherwise thread lock kind of goes everywhere. <laughs> so hopefully you guys can see. And when you're tightening these, make sure you're pushing the wrench in. Okay. And then you can see all the thread lock came off. Wipe in around there. I don't want it to be blue anywhere. And there we go. That's how I put my arms on, my steering arms on. So I'll do the same thing on this side.
Hopefully everybody's doing okay. Sorry about the Facebook feed. Um, it's still right up there. I don't know. I don't know if it just picks up and goes again. I doubt it. Um, Let me go up here. Somebody had asked a question, so let me go up here and uh, see what uh, that question was, see if I can answer it. No blue anywhere, so we're good there. All right, so that's that side. And again, it's kind of up to you guys. Hey, I mean, it's your car, whatever helps keep it together for you. Uh, we are, of course, looking at stuff and we'll see. Your latest, what, your latest setup sheets, uh, motor spray. This is DYN as in Nancy 5500. Uh, your latest, don't show front or rear chassis braces. What do you run usually on the XT and Elite Nitro? Brad, I'm, I'm not sure I understand that question. Um, we, we run the plastic braces going from the gearbox to the car. We run the aluminum front triangle. So I'm not sure. The one thing I know about our setup sheets is you really do need to open them on a computer, guys. Um, it does help a lot. Um as far as the, maybe the arm braces he's talking about, the arm braces on the Truggy, we've been running the carbon in front and none in the rear. On the buggy, we've been running the carbon in the front and the plastic in the rear. Uh, as far as the, maybe the chassis rib, this is the only other thing I can think of. On the buggy, we've been running the carbon fiber rib, the three millimeter carbon fiber rib. And on the Truggy, we've been running the standard aluminum rib, so. Uh, Robert, what is the dynamite thread locker that has the fingernail polish applicator? Uh, I'll have to look for that. I, I've never personally used it. I have seen it, uh, but I'll, I'll take a I'll take a gander for that in a little bit here, uh, and and try to go back and put the part number in there for you. Uh, let's see here. So we got those built, and that gets us to step. Uh, what are we on? D11 now? 9, 10. Yeah, so now we're on D11. Okay, so we're going to come in here. Get this open. I'm going to separate all this stuff out. Droop screws nuts, different length screws, not the little itty bitty ones. Okay, so this has me putting the front arms together, right? So my arm inserts are already in here, at least setting in place. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just put the plastic ones in because that's what comes with the kit. I'm gonna turn this all the way down to one. And just, Go to town. And you always want to push down when using a driver. You don't want to just, that way your tips and everything stay okay. And if you were using the carbon inserts, obviously you'd use the other um, screws. Not seeing a lot of questions is what I'd usually use to uh, fill in the time. Uh, so I apologize, guys. I The Facebook thing, that's actually never happened to me on this. So 
when this is done, I'll have to look it up and see how I would uh, go in and do that again. But there's those. And then I am going to put, this is going to go up high because I'm not going to use it. I'm never going to bottom out these droop screws. But I basically put my driver, my two mil through. Hey, Don. And I put the droop screw on and then I push it against something and push down and then go backwards, right? And then for this, I'm just gonna go in and out a couple times and leave that. You're gonna fix your, you're gonna adjust your droop after everything's said and done. So as long as these are up pretty good, you're gonna be fine. Right? too crazy but there's the arms uh part number i'm talking about okay let me don let's see okay and then we will go ahead and before i forget i'm going to turn that back to five it's where i always put it and i don't want to forget and then go to use it and strip something so left arm right arm let's go ahead and put our carriers in push these in place okay and then put a nut on there nut on this side And then we're going to tighten both of these. And yeah, these, they are supposed to come up from the back. Um, I've seen some people running them the other way. They don't seem to hit anything. So you can, I mean, I think you can run them either way. You can see this is nice and free, nice and free. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and put all the pills and everything in. So... Recently, I had somebody ask me about the pills and they didn't really understand. So I'm going to try to explain it now. Um, so I need the D block. My bags, my bag bomb's a little off. So um, just bear with me a little bit. So this goes this way, actually. Um, so we've got all these little inserts here. And if you can see that, they have a number on them. And the number is either 0, 0.5, or 1. Okay, and what that means is the other side that holds the pin, 0 would be perfectly centered, 0. 0.5 would be a little bit offset, and 1 would be the most offset. Okay, so like here's a 0. 0.5 versus a 1. You can see the offset's much greater with the 0. 0.1. It's a half a millimeter, right? Um, the 0, it doesn't matter which way you put it in the hole. 0, it's centered. But the other ones that are offset, I can put it facing up towards the top of the car, or I could put it facing down toward the bottom of the car. So you want to make sure you put them in uh, the correct direction. Um, for these, the directions say that I'm taking the number one and I'm putting it down into the A block, right? So here's my block. It's going in with the hole to the bottom, right? Because this is the bottom of the block and the top of the block. And this is the front block. So these get the ones. That's a 0.5. That's a 0.5. And that's a 1, right? So when it's all said and done, your A block should look like that with both of them on the bottom. Whoops, sorry. And then the B block are 0.5s up, right? So that means that, and the other thing you can look at, right, is see how there's the circle and the number on this side, and it's on one side. That means that number goes towards the bottom or top. So in this case, that number is going to go towards the top, which is also, so the B block, which is the one already on it, it's kind of hard to show, maybe in this camera. 
Oh, there we go. So you can see on both sides that that's the 0.5 up. Okay. So now I have that. Okay. My hinge pin goes in. One's there. One's there. And then this goes like so. And you push. And then these other two big screws now are going to go in. Put my 2.5 back in. Turn to 9. And put these screws in place. And guys, this is a truggy. The arms are heavier and everything's moving around more. These arms will break in just fine. Um, yep, that's in all the way, in all the way. And there we go. And these move up and down. They don't stick or anything like that. So that's what you want to see. So now I've got the front of the car right and the front of the car is what gets the suspension the the screw holes and then the steering's in the back and the steering's in the back right so we can put these in place so now you can see it's kind of hard to show on the screen it's so so wide <laughs> um well, it's easier with the buggy here we'll put it an angle uh but you can see i put the drive shafts in place now because the next step, we put on the camber rods that we already built. So now I'm always going to face this, what I call forward, and I'm going to take the turnbuckles where this little notch is, and I'm going to put them both to the, what is the United States driver's side or the left side of the car. And you can see when I do that, One's a flange and one's regular. The flange is always in the middle of the car. So I'm going to pull this one over here. And the way I built them last night, I got both flange in the center and both lines are on the left. So that goes like this. So I'm going to put those, sit those there with that. And then I've got two lengths of button head screws left. Okay. The longer lengths, they go out here where the plastic is and the shorter lengths go here. Uh, in the manual, we put them all in from the center. So basically this comes in, shorter one, right in the center, and it's gonna screw into that ball, center, screws into the ball, right? And then this, goes in and you can see in the manual let me see if I can show you guys this maybe here so in the manual you can see you know it's way over here and it's tiny but we do this inset you can you can see what hole it goes into so they go to the inside there and then way down here they go on the inside hole in the middle in the number three hole. Okay. So that's where I'm putting them. This goes over here. The screw just goes right through. And this nut goes on the back. And nothing's tight yet, guys. So I'm not trying to get anything tight yet. I'm just putting everything in place. And then I'll go back through and tighten it all back up. Man, I even remembered to plug my laptop in tonight so I wouldn't lose it that way. <laughs> Can't believe Facebook just aired out like that. I'm going to turn my thing back to nine. Tighten those. Okay. Now, if they spin and you don't hear it stop, you want to go in here 
and you want to tighten this all the way. So this needs to be tight before you put the nut on the back. Okay. So then I turn it around. Now the nuts go on the back here. Okay. And then that gets tightened. In a long main, we usually thread lock all these nuts in place, just so you guys know. Um, no, not the wrong hole, right hole. Um, and again, this this doesn't need to be like super tight. These are locking nuts. They have thread lock in them, but for long mains, we don't like to wonder. So, yeah, I'm reading I'm reading questions from Facebook. I guess I, technically you can get them for you can type in from YouTube as well. So I'm just reading whatever questions pop up. Uh, John, as far as how you adjust the droop, the droop is always adjusted these screws that are in the bottom here. So when this is mounted on the chassis, this screw, this two millimeter from the top, it'll push against the chassis and that's what determines the amount of droop on the car. So, uh, and then we will open up our last bag here pour its contents out. Open up the screw bag. And again, your guys should have been packaged a little bit better. Uh, so you didn't have to do that extra opening in the middle of all of it there. Um, and then we got two of these. We got those. We got some. And again, I, I always do this. Some bigger nuts. Some littler nuts. We got one silver screw. This matches that silver screw. Sway bar balls. Shock collars. One, two, one, oops, not that one. And if you've built enough kits, you do kind of start to understand, you know, there's only so many of each screw, right? So um, the next step that it has us do is put on the sway bar. So the first thing I always do is build these links at the end. And again, like we were talking about, we're going to drop stuff. So this side, you can see the plastic looks perfectly normal, right? This side, there we go. See how it's got that shiny ring? The balls always go into that shiny side, okay? That way everything's as loose as it can be because that's the side we pull it out of the mold on. So there's one. It's also going to be easier to push in because that's the side it was pulled off. Whoop. Missed. Okay, and these you want to be moving around freely. If there's not, you want to um, squeeze them or whatever it takes to get them to be free, guys. So that's nice and free. Um, the front end, the front uses these collars on the front. I'm just going to put the set screws in over here really quick. So those are ready. It's the only problem with front with sway bars is there's just a ton of set screws everywhere. Um, and then for these. Collars. I just start one. And I just stick it on here for now. Not super tight, just snug enough to not fall off. Um, and then I'll center it on the car. Whoop. Uh, nitro, throttle linkage from hitting the shell. Uh, well, I build it like the manual says, and then I cut off the end because there's usually about that much of the end of the throttle link that's sticking off. And as long as you cut that off, like the manual says, uh, it doesn't hit the body at all. Um, all right. So now I'm going to take this, um, what I usually do, and I stick it through 
and I put it in place, and this is going to happen on two these. And for these, there's one side that doesn't have anything and one side that does. The side that doesn't have anything, I always put up. And the reason I always do it the same way is because um, when I take it apart and then I put it back together, like the next time, I will put it back together the same way. So it's not always about how you're putting it together. A lot of the times it's about, um, you know, once you work on it again, and there's some flashing and there's flashing on that side, there's none on this side. So the no flashing for me goes up. I don't really care which way you do it. Um, I just care that you can consistently get your car apart and together as you're, as you're running. Um, so now that's there and you can see it's super loose, right? Moves all over the place. It's because we don't have any set screws at all in place right now. So I'm going to take the next step I do is I take the longer set screws and work them into the middle holes here. I just get one started and then I'll get the other started. And let me move this back so you guys can kind of see what's going on here. Okay, so. I get one started and then I'm going to screw it in as nice and as slow as I need to. You can feel it'll stop wiggling quite as much over on this side. Maybe here. Okay, that's really hard to see. Okay. So less wiggle, moves up and down, moves up and down. Nope. Oh, now all of a sudden it doesn't move up and down. So you can see. So I'm going to then, I'm going to slowly back this off until it falls. And then I'm going to go like another eighth of a turn there, right? And now I'm going to do the same thing on this side, up and down, up and down until it doesn't come down anymore. And again, I'm going slower and slower. Okay. Now you can see, no, you can't see because it doesn't show you. Right, it's up again. This is the other side now we're dealing with. So now, slowly back out, and then it falls, and then a little bit more. So now, it barely moves in and out, right? In and out. So now, I can take, and I can center it. So I'm gonna, oops, wrong one. Both those come off, and then I'm pushing equal on both sides here, right? And you can see if I squeeze them on there too tight, the bar is no longer falling down, right? You always want to make sure you leave a tiny bit of a gap so it still moves. It's not really moving too much back and forth. Um, and then tighten those up good. You don't want them to come loose or anything, right? So now we've got the bar in there. I turn it around. And we are going to take the longer screws. This is something I'm gonna hold that centered. Right. So I can look through there and see, but the other thing you can always do is just take a, a wrench and stick it in there, right? That way you know you're in the center of the ball because you don't want to not get that centered and drive this in and then all of a sudden, you know, you you run the screw through everything, so. And then, it doesn't even need to be all the way tight. It just needs to be there holding the link in place. Um, So we'll put the other side in using the same size screw. Come here, put my wrench in, make sure it's centered, and then bring the screw. And 
there we go. Now that those are in, come back up front, turn it around, face it towards me, and then make sure this is level with the end of the bar, right? And you put this up at an angle, okay? So let me show you what I did there. So you can see when I tightened it, it's facing up. And the reason for that is so when the suspension comes up, the flat part is parallel and clearing the drive shaft. Um, it's not as bad on the 8XT with where we run the pills, but that way the angle makes it flat when it's, when it's up there. So now I'm going to do the other side. Um, and again, for the long mains, you know, typically we'll, we'll get some uh, thread lock on all of these set screws on the sway bar system um, so that it all works out okay. All right, so now we have a sway bar, right? So that's good. We like sway bars. They do very, very good things. Um, let's go ahead and put our shock screws on. And again, in this step, guys, you can see See the in, insert there, and then there's one down here for the shock, right? So we, we try to make it so that these aren't too bad, but so this one's going to go in here, and this one in here. Um, I always put a little thread lock up here. Um, these screws up on top, if you're running aluminum screws, or aluminum nuts, I mean, absolutely put thread lock on it and check it all the time. Um, I have not had good good luck running any brand um, aluminum screws up here. They always seem to come loose during a, a longer main. Um, so I just stick with the steel nuts up here and move on with life. So there's the top. And then on the bottom... Okay, we're gonna use the center hole. There's two screws. There's a black one and there's a silver one. Okay, the black screw is standard thread, righty tighty lefty loosey, what's called a, a right hand thread. The silver screw is left hand thread. The silver screw, when you're looking at the car, right? I'm looking at it from this angle. So if, I, if my car is facing me, right, this is the front of the car, the silver screw is on the left side when we're facing it. It's technically the right corner, the right front corner of the car. But the reason I mention it the way I do is so it's on this side, right? When I'm looking at the car, the silver one's always on the left. So when I turn the car around and the back is facing me, for the back one, the screw will also be on the left. So they go opposite corners. So if this is the front of your car, you know, you've got your silver one on the front right. The silver one goes way back here on your left rear. Um, but as long as you just, whenever you're looking at it, they're on the left, you're okay. Um, we're going to put the shocks on. Now, again, the way I built the shocks, I always run the bleeder screw on the inside. So you can see both of these, the flats out, the bleeder screws on the inside, the silver paint is forward. So I'm going to turn these around now and put my bleeder screws to the inside, right? And hand thread the tops on. And for the bottom, maybe hand thread the top on. Okay, for the bottom, I always make sure you can see here that the screw is facing out because I don't want it to hit the plastic arm and the, the screw face is out. So see, you can't see it here, but there you go. So outside and the screw is out towards you. Um, and again, that's just, uh, you know, I like to make sure that I get it back together the same way every time. And that's one of those things that if I am checking on that each time, then it helps. All right. 
So now let me explain something. One of the reasons we use the different threaded screws is so that you don't have to worry about them coming loose while you're running. Um, it's just a simple, simple method that helps with that. But what that also means, hold on, make sure this is lined up. There we go, lined up properly. Okay, is let me show you uh, if you can see it. See this silver thread? I can get like a fingernail under that. I mean, it doesn't have to be that loose, but the reason I mention that the black head over here is the same way. I can get like a yeah, see that one's I could probably tighten that one up a little bit more, but basically, what I'm getting at is those will never come loose, guys. Um, and the reason I mention it this way is I see a lot of people that they'll take these screws and they'll take their driver that's like a torque driver or they've got it up on 10 or something. They'll drive these screws in. And what that does is it compresses the plastic. So then the plastic comes in and that little lip of the ball digs into it. And then their plastic ends up living like this. So every time they go to get their shock out, they're like, eh, 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 my shock doesn't come out. Well, that's because you drove that screw in too hard. Um, so anyway, you don't need to drive it in that far. You can tighten it all the way, but there you go. And then I just tighten these top two. And then the last step is to put the body mounts on. Okay. So my driver is on five here. Just putting a screw through the top. And I'm going to start the top one. And all four of these screws are the same size. Start the bottom one. We can go to four. This is fairly soft plastic. So four is good for this. Howdy, Jermaine. And these are actually the same front body mounts as the 4.0. Um, the three mil screws worked fine in them, so we didn't modify them at all. So if you have any extra, might as well keep them as a spare part. Okay. So, and then that, I believe, the 18 is the end. So now we've got a front clip, guys. Again, I don't have grease in here yet. And I, that's just because I'm going to go set this down in the box and I might grab it and whatnot. Um but everything's nice and free, as free as I would, I'm would. i okay with um, to make sure you guys are all going to have a, a nice gear set that lasts. It does have the new HD rod ends on it. It comes with those. Um, you get the nice black towers that, you know, on the buggies were elite things. Um, pills are all in the right way. Um, and we've got our orange front. So the stock springs, they are orange, but they're not this color. They're black. Um, these were test springs. So when we're just testing, we don't have them code them or anything. Um, but yeah, there's the front of a truck that goes in way over here in the box. And then, uh, tomorrow night I will do bag E as an Edward, which is the rear clip. Um, there's been a lot of questions guys about the, uh, rear ring and pinion. Um, it's now a plastic case. So you actually have to shim it accordingly. It's not, we've got big thick sidewalls and, and big aluminum holders and all this stuff. So, um, you know, it does build up a little different than some of you are, are used to, uh, in all fairness. Um, let me see if there's any questions here. There probably won't be as many just because of what happened with Facebook guys. And I, again, I apologize about that. Hopefully this will post. Okay. When I end, um, so on the inserts for the hinge pins, you said 0.5 goes up on the car side and zero on the bumper side. Nope. The, the manual as it is and as we're running, um, they go 0.5 up in the B block or the car side, as you're calling it. And on the bumper side, they're one, they're pills number one down. So it, it takes and takes some of the front rake out of the truggy. Um, and yeah, 
I mean, I, there's not a lot of questions and a lot of people dropped off all over the place. So I'm going to go ahead and end this broadcast, guys. Um, hopefully everybody's had a good night. I'm sorry about the Facebook part. Um, we'll all meet again tomorrow night. So if there were questions that you had or after you watch this, you have more questions, feel free to ask me tomorrow night uh, when we're building bag E, uh, which is the rear end. So everyone, I hope you had a good day and have a good evening and uh, take care.